Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for listening in today to our third lecture. Can you go ahead and just type something into the chat or the Q&A box so that I know you can hear me? Okay, and then I'll go ahead and get started. Looks like there are still a couple more people that are logging on to the live lecture. So I'll go ahead and get started in about 30 seconds. But for those of you who are on, please let me know you can hear me all right. Okay, looks like the sound is working. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, our lecture today is going to be all things data. We're going to talk about data formatting when you have a data set that, you know, might be from the government, might be from some or other um, open data source online, and it's just really dirty, and Tableau doesn't really know how to interpret it, doesn't know how to categorize them into dimensions and measures like you would want when you're going to start um, doing some data discovery. And we're going to talk about, okay, we not only have one data set, but we have two. How do we join them in Tableau? How do we make two data sets talk to each other, essentially, with Tableau? And then we're also going to talk about data blending. And we'll go more into all of these over the next um, hour or so. But before we start talking about data, I'm going to quickly go over a little bit about author profile pages, um, something that I haven't talked about yet. but. Everybody, when you create a Tableau public account, you get an author profile page like this one. So basically like YouTube, but for data visualization. You get to upload all the data visualizations that you create here. And something that some people don't know about with uh, the author profile pages is that you can actually control not only your featured viz, but also the other visualizations that you have down here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So if you go ahead and sign into your Tableau public account, Once you're signed in, then we'll have this little orange button up here in the upper left-hand corner that says Edit Profile. If you select Edit Profile, now the window changes and we see a little bit more. So as you can see here, I can now select which workbooks I want other people to be able to see when they come to my um, author profile page. I can say that I want this one, this one, this one, but I don't want a couple other ones. Now, people can actually navigate and find these workbooks on the web if they have the exact URL, but they're not easily displayed, um, and if someone came to my author profile page, they would not see them. So as you can see, I have a lot of other things that I've been working on, but I only have some that are visible. Uh, if, let's say, you're working with some somewhat sensitive data that you don't want to necessarily have featured on your author profile page, but you still want to publish a visualization so that you can share it with other people. Well, you can just click this button right here, the Hide Workbooks by Default in Publishing. So that basically means instead of automatically showing a visualization when you publish it to the web, it will just automatically hide it unless you go in and say, no, show this on my profile. So that's just a little bit of information about author profile pages. Are there any questions on those? Okay, doesn't look like it. Um, another thing that I wanted to say housekeeping-wise before we move on, I uh, just wanted to announce the times of office hours this week. We're going to be having office hours tomorrow um, from 1 o'clock until 3 o'clock, and that's Pacific Standard Time, or Pacific Daylight Time, I should say, um, Seattle Time. And we're also going to be having them on Wednesday from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m., uh, Seattle time. So please let me know if there are other times that work best for you. I'm just trying to do a mix of times to try and get um, different time zones, things like that. So if you have a time that you'd really like to chat with me a little bit about a visualization and it doesn't fall into one of our scheduled office hour times, please feel free to shoot me a note and say, hey, can I have 20 minutes of your time? And I'm, I'm almost guaranteed that I'll be able to be able to say, yes, that'd be awesome, when works best for you. Um, my schedule is fairly open this week, so please let me know if you'd like to schedule a little one-on-one -on -one office hour time. Okay, now that we've covered our little housekeeping thing, let's just go ahead and jump into our data and start talking about all things data. 
So to start out, let's look at the, the data set. So here's the data set that we're working with today. And this is about wages and the change in wages over time. Um, so as you can see here, we have a bunch of different industries. We have a unique identifier for the industries. And we also have a lot of information about these industries. We have a couple of high level statistics about these. We have over the span of three years, the percent earnings change. We have over 12 years, what the earnings change was. We have, you know, job change, percent job change. And then we also have the just total number of jobs in each of these years, along with the earnings per job in each of these 12 years. But if we bring this into Tableau, it won't look very nice. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's just go ahead and try it. Let's try bringing this exact data set right here into Tableau. And today I'm going to be using Tableau Desktop. So please um, let me know if you have any questions along the way about anything that I'm going over. All right, there we go. So now we have Tableau Desktop pulled up in my computer. And I'm just going to connect to this data. I'm going to navigate to where it is on my computer. I know that it's a Microsoft Excel file. And let's go ahead and open it up. OK, so in my Excel file, it looks like my data is under the Nation's Final tab. I'm just going to drag Nation's Final into my visual data window. And there we go. Tableau has interpreted the Excel spreadsheet. And let's see what it looks like. Let's see if we can do anything with this. So now it looks like we have all of the columns from our Excel sheet in Tableau as fields. We've got industry. We have a bunch of the jobs. But the way the data is currently structured, we can't look at the job change over time. We can't see the things, the change in earnings per job over time, because we don't have a field that says year. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back into our Excel spreadsheet, restructure the data, make the data in a format that makes sense to bring it into Tableau. And then we're going to bring it into Tableau and keep asking and answering some of these questions. So let's exit out of this. We can't get anything useful from this right now. Do you want to save changes to this workbook? No, we're going to make better data and then bring it in. So the first thing that I'm noticing with this Excel spreadsheet is that I'm going to want to have year as a column. I'm going to want to be able to see you know, the jobs in a certain year as a column. I'm not going to want to see it broken down where each column is uh, a job in a certain year. Essentially, what I want to do is um, revert this cross-tabbing of the data. Now, what I'm actually going to want to do, though, I'm going to end up wanting to have year as a column, and I'm also going to want to have jobs as a column, and I'm going to want to have earnings per job as a column. So to do this, I'm going to use something called the Tableau Reshaper tool. But what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to use the Tableau Reshaper tool uh, separately for each of these two different pieces of information. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. As you can see here, we have a lot of different industries. I guess what I could have done is just select the columns. Let's do that instead. So I have these two columns. I'm just going to copy these into a new sheet in my Excel. And then I'm also going to go back into this original um, sheet on my Excel file. And I'm going to grab all of the columns for the jobs. So jobs in 2001 through the jobs in 2013. Let's just copy those and paste those into our new sheet that we've created. OK, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to use something called the Tableau Reshaper tool to essentially take this and revert the cross tab. We're now going to have. Um, multiple rows corresponding to the different years for each industry. So that way our data is at its most granular level before we bring it into Tableau. Because when we bring our data into Tableau, we want to have the lowest level of aggregation. So that way we can have Tableau help us do the aggregation for us. So what we're going to do is use this Tableau Reshaper tool. Essentially what we want is we want to take all of the column headers, all of the column headers that have important information to us, namely this year, and turn them into rows. We're just going to take the data and kind of go like this. 
there's this nice Excel add-in called the Tableau Reshaper tool. I've mentioned it a couple of times so far. It's actually really easy to download online. Just go ahead and Google Tableau Reshaper tool. And it should come up here. There we go. Installing the Tableau add-in for reshaping data. And there are a bunch of other blog posts that show you how to use this Reshaper tool more often. This Reshaper tool will become your best friend. I use this all the time. It's so helpful because so many times you find data sets that are really awesome and you can tell have really cool stories in them, but you can't feasibly bring this into Tableau and answer your questions. So now that we've talked about the Tableau Reshaper tool, let's actually reshape our data. To start, you're going to want to place your cursor in the first spot that you want the data reshaped. So I want to start reshaping the data right underneath my job in 2001 column and corresponding to the first industry. That way, we'll get all of the columns to the right of jobs in 2001 reshaped. So let's go ahead and reshape this data by selecting the reshape data button. And we have our cursor in the correct spot. And it's nice we have a little visual example right here too. So if you forget where to place the cursor before you reshape, just go ahead and look at this picture right here and we'll help you do that. So let's just select OK. So now Tableau is thinking, it's reshaping our data. It's creating all of those column headers as a new row. So as you can see here now, this is what our data looks like before we reshaped it. We had all of these columns for all the industries. Now we have multiple rows per industry, but each row corresponds to a different year. So as you can see here, we've just now reverted that cross tab where this column will be our year and this column will be the number of jobs. And we can go ahead and just rename that. So instead of saying column four, let's call this number of jobs. And we'll call this column header year. So the only thing that I'm seeing that will cause us problems when you bring it into Tableau is that we don't have just year here. We have jobs in blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a really quick find and replace in Excel. I'm just going to replace jobs in with nothing. And let's replace that. So now Tableau, or sorry, Excel has gone in and just taken out jobs in so that we just have the year in this column. That way, when we bring it into Tableau, Tableau can recognize this column or this field as being numeric and also being a year. Okay, so let's close this. So now, if you can imagine, if we had reshaped all of this data, we would now have all of the jobs in 2001 through 2013 um, corresponding here, but we would also have earnings per job, whereas we don't really want that to be combined in one field. We want to have two separate sheets that will have, one will have number of jobs and the other one will have the earnings per job. And then when we go into Tableau, we can actually combine these two sets of data. I'm going to pause real quick for questions. Anyone have questions about what we've gone over so far? OK, looks like there are no questions so far. Please feel free to type those in along the way. So now that we've reshaped the number of jobs, what we next want to be able to do is we want to reshape the earnings per job so that we can actually see if we can draw some comparisons between number of jobs, earnings per job, over time, questions like these. So we're going to do the same exact thing we just did, except for we're going to do it with earnings per job instead of number of jobs. So again, let's just create a new sheet in Excel. And I'm going to go back to my original sheet, and I'm going to just copy over my unique identifier, the NAICS number, and industry. So we'll copy those over first. And let's go back to our main sheet. And let's just copy in earnings per job.
for all the years. Copy those. We'll paste those next to our industries. And this time, instead of finding and replacing um, something after I've reshaped, let's just do it before. So I'm just going to find and replace earnings per job with nothing. That way, when I reshape the data, I will only have year in my column instead of having this text field here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started. Let's reshape this. So I'm going to place my cursor again, the first cell that I want my data to be reshaped, select reshape data, and then I'm going to say, okay. Tableau does the thinking, it's taking all of our columns and turning them into rows. And now we have our reshaped data with the earnings per job. But the first thing that I'm seeing is that this is being formatted as a um, currency. And this is something, keep in mind, we can change that in Tableau. So we will, we will deal with this when we bring it into Tableau. But I'm just going to go in and rename my column headers again. We'll say this is year. And this is going to be earnings per job. Okay, a couple other cleanup things before we bring this into Tableau. Let's delete sheet one and sheet three. Those were just sheets that we used before we reshaped. We don't really need them anymore. So let's just delete sheet one, sheet three. There we go. And let's rename sheet one to be number of jobs and rename sheet three to be earnings per job. Awesome. And since we already have all of this data, the earnings per job and jobs, I'm just going to go ahead and delete those columns because we are already going to bring the information in elsewhere. Okay, so now we have some awesome information that we can go ahead and bring into Tableau. We have these high level uh, measures about each of the industries, and we have these nice reshaped data on number of jobs and earnings per job. So I'm going to save this to make sure I don't lose any of that work. All right, my Excel sheet is saved. And let's go back into Tableau. Any questions on the reshaping of the data? Okay, no questions so far. Let's keep moving. All right, now I'm back in Tableau and let's just connect to data. I'm going to go ahead and start by um, going into my Microsoft Excel file, opening my wage data. And let's just start by bringing in those high level, um, those high level statistics that we had about the industries. And that was under nation final. So as you can see here, we're looking into our um, visual data window and it looks like Tableau has interpreted those correctly. Let's go ahead and check it out. So if I go to my worksheet, now we do, we have our industry as a dimension and then let's look down at our measures. One thing that my, my um, eye can, goes to right away is that this number is being categorized as a measure. The end a-I-C-S. But if we look back at our Excel sheet, we see that this is being used as a unique identifier, not as something that we're going to want to do math on. So we want to be able to change this. We want this to be a dimension instead of a measure. We're not going to want to average or sum or do any of that. We're just going to want to slice and dice the data by this number. So we can just drag this measure up to dimensions. And then now we can be able to use this NAICS number as a unique identifier, which is perfect. So let's go ahead and just start asking some questions. Let's start exploring this data. Let's say I want to see all of my industries. And for all of my industries, I want to see the percent change in jobs from 2001 to 2013. So let's say I just want to see it as text. Okay. Now remember from my data set that this number is actually a percent. And in fact, we have all of these as percents except for the number of job changed. But Tableau's not automatically 
recognizing this as a percent change. But this is something that we can easily go in and say, okay, Tableau, this is a percent. To do that, let's right click on measures, go to default properties, and say number format. Now, we have a bunch of different options on how we can format this particular field. We can say, uh, do you want to have it be a number? If you want to just be a number, how many decimal places do you want to show? How do you want to display negative values? What units do you want to have, if any? And any prefix or suffixes. In this case, we know that this particular field, we want to be a percentage. And let's see, how many decimal places would we like for these? Let's say just one. We can say okay. And now Tableau has formatted this as a percentage. So let's just quickly go through and do that to our other percentages. We can right click on our second um, percentage one, go to default properties, number format, change it to a percentage, and let's do this with one decimal place as well. Say okay. And I'm just going to quickly do that to our other two fields that we know we would like to have as percentages. Just change them to ones that have one decimal place. And we're almost there. One more. There we go. And we can go ahead and just double check and make sure that this is done correctly by just replacing the pill that we already dragged to our text field with another one. So let's just replace it by placing it directly on top of, you see when you get that blue outline on the pill, that means we're going to replace with whatever I'm hovering over it with currently. And yeah, we still have them formatted as a percent. And let's just double check and make sure it didn't format all of them as a percent by taking our job change and seeing that visually. Okay, perfect. So now we have all of the data in our um, high level statistics uh, formatted correctly and as we wish. But let's go a step further and let's say I'm just go ahead, I'm looking at my data and I'm seeing, wow, a lot of these industries are really long and I can't really quickly and easily see what industry is what. Well, there's a really easy way in Tableau to change this. Um, and that's called aliases. And aliases can be really powerful. For example, let's say you have a data set where you have a bunch of information about females and males, but in your data, it has females as F and males as M. Well, to change that so that whenever you see that particular um, gender, to change it so you see female or male or girls or boys, we can just change the alias. So that way, whenever we see that particular um, gender in our workbook, that it will show whatever we like. So to do that, what we can do is just right click on industry, and this is the, the industry pill. We could do it over here from dimensions as well, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But let's do it from this pill over here that we dragged onto the rows shell. If we right click on the pill, or if we select the drop down carrot and say edit aliases, this is the window right here where we can edit and change these different aliases. So let's say I want accounting, tax preparation, bookkeeping, and payroll services to just be accounting, et cetera. I can change activities related to credit intermediation. I can just have that say, take out activities related to. I can do the same for activities related to on the real estate one and so on. Now, I have a lot of industries in this particular data set, so it would take a lot of time for me to go through and edit all of these aliases. Um, so I'm not going to do that on the lecture today, but this is something that you can work on and do on a smaller data set that has um, less, um, less, uh, less industries or less field, things like that. So let's just say okay and see if that changes our window. There we go. So now the changes that we just made to the alias have been reflected in the current view. And in fact, whenever we use industry again in this workbook, um, industry from this particular data set, it will reflect the aliases that we've used. Are there any questions on aliasing or changing the default properties of the data?
Okay, let's go ahead and keep moving. So now that we've talked a little bit about interpreting data in Tableau, and we've talked about reshaping data in Excel, let's continue and talk about the next topic on our all things data, which would be joins. Now, joins are based off of SQL, but you don't have to know SQL to know how to do a join in Tableau, especially with the launch of 8.2, because in 8.2, we now have a visual window for these joins, whereas prior to our launch of 8.2, it was something that was a lot less intuitive. So let's go back and let's just look at um, a PowerPoint that I have that explains um, a little bit more about joining data sets. Okay, so there's three different types of joins. There are inner joins, there are left joins, and there are right joins. And each of them will give you different information depending on the data set. So let's look at these two tables we have here. Let's say in one data set we have all the names and all of their IDs, and in the other data set we have all the records of sales. But we don't have the name of the person whose sale it was, we just have their identifier, their ID number. So what an inner join will do is, let's say we want to join these data sets on ID. We recognize that there are some IDs that match between our two data sets, and we want to get some information um, with an inner join about just those customers who have purchased things according to this data set. So we really don't care about any of the people in this data set that haven't purchased anything, and we don't care about anyone in this data set who's not already a known customer. So what we would do is all of the IDs that are in both tables would stay, and any ID that's not in both tables would go. So Mary isn't, um, hasn't purchased anything recently, she gets knocked out. Same with the person who had the hot dog. They're not in our system, they get knocked out. And the same person who purchased the corn dog and the french fries. They're also out. So our resulting table will just have Joe, Sue, and Bob with their corresponding IDs because they show up in both of our tables. Similarly, we can talk about left joins. Now, left joins is literally the table on the left is the one that we're joining to. So everyone in this left table will stay, but only information from our right table that is corresponding to someone who's already in our left table will make it into the final table. Which means that the people who aren't a known customer, so this identifier 498 and 115, um, this person does not make it into our table. And the thing about left joins is we now have the possibility for a null because anyone who hasn't purchased anything recently but who is an existing customer will get a null as you can see down here. We can also talk about right joins. Now, with right joins, we're joining to the right table, so all of this information will stay. And then anyone who's purchased something in the last week or so, if they're already a customer, their name will get added into our table. But if they're not, they'll go away. So as you can see here, Mary hasn't purchased anything, so she's gone. But we have a couple purchases, the hot dog, the corn dog, and the french fries, where we don't know the name of the ID. So they get nulls. But all of the information that we have here is still in the table that we have. So choosing the right join really depends on what your data is. And that's something that it should most of the time, not all the time, be relatively intuitive on which join makes the most sense. One of the rules of thumbs that we try to stick with is you join to the table that has the most information. So let's say you have a bunch of information about um, environmental data in the world, and you have it for 10 years, and then you're trying to join in a, um, a table that has all the countries and the corresponding regions or something like that. That's when you would want to do a left join because we have more information on the larger data set, the first one that I described. So let's see this in action. Let's go ahead and look at the data that we have and see what kind of data, or what kind of join makes sense. So we already have this data in Tableau, and we're gonna come back to this data more in just a little bit, 
this data we're actually going to blend, and I'll explain more about why we're doing that in just a second. But what we want is we want to bring in number of jobs and earnings per job into Tableau. Any questions on this so far? Anything you'd like me to go over one more time or anything like that? Okay, let's keep moving. So now that we've looked at our data and we know what we want to join, we want to join number of jobs and earnings per job. Let's see how easy it is in Tableau. I'm just going to connect to data, and to do that, I just clicked on this connect to data button right here. And I know that my data is a Microsoft, in a Microsoft Excel file. I know that it's called wage data, so let's open it up. Now, instead of pre eight uh, Tableau 8.2, um, where we would have to think about, okay, what do I want to join and how is that resulting table going to look? Now with 8.2, we have this really nice, easy, simple way to look at our data before we bring it into, um, into Tableau. So let's go ahead and drag earnings per job and number of jobs. So now look, we can see automatically that Tableau has um, given us an inner join of these two, and it's joined it on this unique identifier that we have. And let's look down at our data. Does this data look accurate? Well, yes, it does. It looks like we have all of our industries, we have all of our NAICS numbers, and we have imported the number of jobs and the earnings per job. But I'm just going to go ahead and look at this join to just double make sure. Let's add another join clause. I know that with um, we have year in my data set. And if I look over here, it looks like for this particular row that we've matched up the year for earnings per job, 2001, to year and number of jobs, 2001. That's good. If I look at my second row down, I have my year 2002 for earnings per job corresponding to 2001 for number of jobs which doesn't make that much sense. We would want to compare these over the same year. So I'm going to add a new join clause. I'm going to say I want the year in my earnings per job to equal the year in my number of jobs. So now if we look down at our visual data window, we see that, yeah, those two now correspond to one another, which is good. That's what we want. And then I'm going to go a step further and say, I know for sure that these industries are the same. I know that the NAICS numbers are as well, but I just like seeing industry linked up better because that's what I'm actually going to be dealing with. So now we've done an inner join on year and industry. And in this case, an inner join and a left join will be identical because we have the same years in both of our data sets. So as you can see here, the number of rows is exactly the same because an inner and a left join will be identical. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with an inner join. And let's go ahead and go to our worksheet and see what it looks like when we bring this into Tableau. I'm going to open up a new sheet. And so now, under my data connection, I have two data connections. I have my earnings per job, and that was the one that we just created. And I have my... Um, nation final, and that's what we were dealing with earlier. So let's see how Tableau interpreted that inner join. As you can see here now, we have the earnings per job and we have the number of jobs, which is what we want. But similarly to with our, our last data connection, we have this unique identifier that's been classified as a measure. But we want that to be a, a, a dimension instead. So let's just drag that up to dimensions. And do the same with this unique identifier. Okay, let's go ahead and move a step further and ask and answer some questions. Remember in our Excel file when we saw that the year for earnings per job was formatted as, um, as being currency, which we don't want. But now we look and we see, okay, Tableau has solved that for us. It's recognized it as being numeric, but we aren't um, Sorry, but that's a good thing. We're good. We are totally fine on that. So now we can keep moving on this, and we can 
let's say build a bar chart. Let's say we want to combine these pieces of information. We went through so much trouble to reshape the data and bring it into Tableau. Let's just test and make sure that we can actually combine the earnings per job and the number of jobs. Let's make a bar chart that shows the earnings per job colored by the number of jobs. And let's say I want to make the number of jobs a different color. I can select the drop-down carrot, and let's make it red-green diverging. So that way I can really quickly and easily see where are there a lot of jobs and where are there not very many jobs. And maybe because there's so much red up here and it's hard for me to see, maybe I want to see the number of jobs uh, visually on the bar and maybe the earnings per job on the color. And let's go ahead and just see what it looks like when we change this color scale to red green. Wow. A lot of these jobs have a lot of openings, but then aren't earning a lot. But then similarly to what we dealt with, I think it was two weeks ago, maybe it was last week in our lecture, this number is really high. Because you'd think intuitively, okay, if someone's getting paid, you know, over $500,000 per year, that's pretty good. Why is that colored red? Why is that on the low end? Well, we can put a year filter on here and just show this quick filter and just show 2013. And then we're getting numbers that make a lot more sense. So you see, because we went in and joined these two data sets, then we had the ability to combine them on the view and show the earnings per job and the number of jobs at the same time. All right, let's, let's ask a slightly different question. Let's say, okay, cool, I can see the number of jobs here, but maybe I wanna see the number of jobs colored by something other than the earnings per job. Maybe I wanna see them colored by the percent change of the jobs in the last, I don't know, 12 years. Oh, cool, I actually have that data already in my other data set. Now, we're going to talk about something called blending instead of joining. And here's the reason why blending makes more sense in this case than actually joining. So if we joined these two data sets, we would have roughly 12 copies for all the years that we have, so years 2001 through 2013, of each of these measures, which would then make it really complicated to go in and say, no, I actually only want one of those values, maybe divide by 12, I don't know. It just gets really complicated. So we're going to blend these instead. And Tableau, we can tell, has already interpreted this as um, blending or having fields that are the same because we see this little chain right here. And now blending differs from joining in the fact that joining gives you a separate table with the join, whereas um, where the information is literally talking to each other in the table. We have year talking to year from earnings per job to number of jobs, and we have industry talking to this industry. Whereas when we blend, we're going to just pull the information from the other table. We're not going to have them be in direct communication. But because we have this link right here, what Tableau is saying is, okay, I see this industry, okay, that's gonna match up with the other industry that you're working on. So let's just see what happens. Let's drag the percent change in jobs from 2001 to 2013. Let's drag that onto color and see what happens. Now, what Tableau has done is it said, okay, whatever data set that you brought information onto the view first, that's your primary data set. That's the data set that I'm going to label with a blue check mark. So whatever comes first onto the view is primary. And then anything beyond that is going to be your secondary data source. So any additional information that's not already in the primary data source. And then with the secondary data source, we can go in and um, then link together on certain fields with this orange link. And so as you can see here, we get this really cool view where we can see the number of jobs in 2013 and the percent change over the last 12 years or so. And all the numbers intuitively make sense to us. We're the data experts. 
any questions on joining, blending, the difference between them, things like that? Okay, we can talk more about this later if you have any specific questions or if we want to go through another example. So we talked about starting with a, per se, dirty data set, something that's not clean, something that has headers that need to be reshaped, and then basically taking that, reshaping it in Excel, bringing that reshaped data into Tableau. We talked about joining the data sets in Tableau and blending the data sets in Tableau. And honestly, most of the time I join data sets when I have information that I want to um, use that's in multiple sheets, multiple Excel sheets, or things like that, just because I know that I'm controlling exactly how they're connected. Blending, um, you also can control how they're connected, but it's a little bit less concrete. So Blending can be a great option to use every once in a while, but most of the time I stick with joining um, the data sets. The advantage of blending is that, with this example in particular, um, blending the data sets, we are just gathering the information across industry in our two data sets. So we're taking just this one value right here, the 2001 to 2013 percent change, we're just grabbing that number from our secondary data set. Whereas if we had joined them, we would have um, 12 different rows with that value in it because of how we reshape the data. Whereas we don't want 12 copies of that number, we just want one copy of that number. So that's why blending here makes more sense. Any other questions on the differences between joining and blending? Okay, up next, I'm going to give you a little intro into calculated fields. We're gonna go a lot more into them next week, but I'm just gonna give you a little, little taste of calculated fields. Um, calculated fields are something that we could honestly spend an entire five-week course alone on calculated fields, but there's something that can be very important and can really add some value to your visualization. So let's just go ahead and start by creating a calculated field. Let's say I want to, with my data, with the number of jobs that I have, let's see. If I go back into this one, let's view this data. With the number of jobs that I have, let's say I really want to pinpoint and pick out those industries in certain years that have really low number of jobs. I'm looking and I'm seeing a lot of jobs that have over 200,000 or um, around there. So let's say I'm going to classify those um, industries that have more than 200,000 jobs as lots of jobs and the ones that have less as not as many jobs. I can create a calculated field where I can actually slice and dice the data by that. So let's do that. Let's create a calculated field. So to create a calculated field, we're going to right click on the data window over here and say create calculated field. So again, I'm right clicking and I'm saying create calculated field. And this is the window that you get when you create a calculated field. And remember, we made one of these last week with our, our case statements and our parameters. So we already have a head start on that. But for this one, I'm going to create um, a logical statement. But first, let's go through and just look at what we're seeing in this, uh, this window. We can name our calculations, so I can say, um, a lot of jobs, question mark. The formula is where I'll be going through and exactly telling Tableau how I'd like this particular calculated field to be um, to be created. And then down here, there's a bunch of resources that we have or things that we can use when we're creating our calculated fields. As you can see here, we can pull information from our data that we already have in Tableau for these calculated fields. And that's a lot of times what calculated fields will be created out of. They'll be created out of existing information that we already have. We can pull 
the value of any parameters that we have, which we used last week. And then there's also a lot of functions here that we can use to create these calculated fields. As you can see, we have some functions that just refer to numbers. We can take you know, mathematical functions like the cosine. Um, we can take the maximum, the minimum, things like that. But then we also have other calculated field or calculations for strings. So let's say if we have like here, we can do calculated fields. So if something starts with cal C A, then it's true. Or if something contains something, then it's true. We have date functions. We have other types of functions like aggregate functions, table calculations, which we'll go into in just a second. And then we also have logical functions. And that's actually what we're going to be using now. We're going to say if the number of jobs is less than 200,000, then lots of, uh, not very many jobs. Else, a lot of jobs end. So if number of jobs is less than 200,000, then not as many jobs. Else, a lot of jobs end. So now what this will do is Tableau will go through and look at all the jobs that we have, and it will say, okay, do you have a lot of jobs? Do you have not as many jobs? And it will assign one of these two strings to every row in our data set. And let's just see this in action. Let's say, okay. So let's say we want to instead color this view by whether or not each industry has a lot of jobs or not as many jobs. I'm just going to drag this off of my color, and I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to set my year filter to be discrete, so I can just look at discrete years, kind of like what we did with our earthquakes. Now I'm just looking at one year. I can show my quick filter if I want to and change that, let's say, to a slider or a drop down. And let's say I want to color these by a lot of jobs or not. I can drag this, um, this dimension right here and drop it on color. Now let's look through. Where are the industries that have a lot or not as many? And it makes sense. We have number of jobs on our columns, and we're saying, okay, according to this information, say either a lot of jobs or not as many jobs. Now, this is the cutoff right here where it drops below 200,000. Well, let's say we want to ask a slightly different question. Let's, let's see if we want to see a correlation between those jobs that earn a lot and whether or not there are a lot of them. So now I can see Okay, pipeline transportation of natural gas. There are, making a lot of money if you have that job, but there are not as many of those jobs as, say, financial investment activities or software publishers. So this is a really cool view where I can gather some more information on this type of thing. But let's say I want to ask a slightly different question. Let's say I want to ask the question of, over time, how has the number of jobs changed. So to do that, I'm going to open up a new sheet. And the side note real quick, whenever you create a calculated field, it'll have this little equal sign next to it. So you can really quickly and easily see which of the fields you brought in from your data set or your data source and which ones you've created in Tableau. So the little equal sign means that that's been created. So let's see now, I want to see over time, how has the number of jobs changed? So now what we have is we have just a straight sum of all the industries. And let's say I want to break this down, similarly to how we did, um, was that last week or the week before? So I can break that up by adding industry to my level of detail. Okay, so this might look really overwhelming at first, but if we continue to unpack this, we can make this into a really powerful view. So we're going to add a quick table calculation. And to add a quick table calculation, the easiest way to do it is by adding it to the pill that's already in the view. So 
We've already added some of number of jobs to our view, but we want to manipulate this. We want to say, okay, I want to see a table calculation instead of just the straight number of jobs. I can select this little drop down carrot, go to my quick table calculation here, and let's say I want a percent of total, or I want, let's see, percent difference. Okay, this looks kind of overwhelming, but I can do a couple things to make it look easier and for me to be able to gather some information out of here. Let's start by decreasing the size of these lines, making them smaller so we can see where one starts and another stops. We can also do something like, let's just take this calculation or let's take number of jobs again and color it. But let's have a different table calculation to the coloring. Instead of having it be percent difference, let's have it be a straight difference. So now we can see the spots where there's these huge, huge decreases. Another thing to know about table calculations is that we can change what they're computed along. So if we select the little drop down carrot here, we can compute this using industry. So we can see, okay, compared to the same industry, how has the difference been? So that's what we're coloring this by now. So that was just a really quick intro to calculated fields, quick table calculations, how to manipulate them a little bit. Next week, we're really going to dive deeper into more on these types of information and um, have more use cases on when they're useful to use certain things. We still have a little bit of time left. Is there anything else you'd like me to cover on joining, blending, or any outstanding questions that you have? All right, we've got some typing going on. I'll just wait just a second. All right, looks like that is all for questions for right now. Thank you so much for joining in today to the lecture and um, I really look forward to seeing what you're going to create in the assignment. The assignment, um, the only requirements for it are basically take some data, join, join at least two tables, and create a cool viz from it. Um, so please join me in office hours if you have any questions. Other than that, have a great week, and I'll see you on the Reddit page. Thanks, everyone. Bye.